highly advanced virtual assistant? Sounds good to me. Well. Viruses suck. I think we can all agree with that after 2020. You have to stay indoors, take a bunch of medicine, all while feeling absolutely miserable. And that's basically what happens when a computer gets one. Computer malware has been around pretty much since the invention of the computer. From simply being a program that could replicate itself, to now being able to hold all your data for ransom, malware has come a long way. Yet, back in the day, it wasn't entirely for malicious purposes. It was a way to show off and say, Hey, look at me, I can do this! Malware was insanely interesting, and sometimes cool. But now, it's boring. Mostly. So let's take a look at the cooler, less destructive side of malware, and what's changed since then. Malware, short for malicious software, is a broad topic, and while people often refer to malware as viruses colloquially, there's actually some differences in malware. There are three major types of malware, Trojans, Viruses, and Worms. Trojans are the lowest level of malware, as they normally are standalone and have the purpose of inflicting as much damage as possible. The name comes from the Greek mythological Trojan Horse, in which the Greeks hid in a wooden horse to invade the city of Troy and win the Trojan War. In a similar vein, computer Trojans often make themselves look like a normal program, but actually contain malicious code. This can be anything from just annoying the user to deleting files and corrupting the system. Trojans can also self-replicate, allowing itself to be in multiple places at once. Viruses are a step up, as much like real-life viruses, they infect itself into other files. This makes it so that when certain programs are run, the virus runs with it, so that even if you delete the original file, it lives on in the computer, hidden in plain sight. Sometimes this just replaces the code in programs, causing them to become unusable, but other times it can keep everything intact and screw with the user in the same ways that Trojans can. Most times you can tell when a file has been infected, such as with file size increases and decreases, but it can be a bit sneaky and hide itself as well. And then worms. Worms, at a minimum, have one purpose, and one purpose only. Spread. They self-replicate themselves and then send off those replications as far off as it can. This can be done by email, IRC clients, or through the network. Normally, the worm will use deception tactics to make the end user open the file, such as disguising itself with a different file extension. Of course, worms can also infect files and annoy the user, just as any Trojan or virus would, but their main goal and the thing that differentiates them is the ability to spread. So that's how malware differs, but what's so cool about early malware? To summarize a quote from Spanska, a virus author back in the day, it takes 20 lines of assembly code to format a hard drive. It only takes 5 to delete a file. Each can be done within a matter of minutes, even seconds. Making something beautiful, however, can take weeks. That was the mentality of many malware authors back in the day. Any old script kitty could code something malicious, but it takes effort and knowledge to make something that's cool. A lot of these early viruses echo the demo scene of the 8-bit era of computing, with their fancy graphics. But the main people making malware back in the day were just kids looking for something fun and mischievous to do with their computers, no one truly malicious. They even formed their own groups and had pseudo-wars with both other groups and the antivirus companies. There's plenty of notable names here like Nuke and 29A which is 666 in hexadecimal, by the way. Now, before I go talking about all this malware, I want to make a warning to not try to find any of these and run it on your computer. Hell, don't even run it on a VM, because things can spread quick if you don't know what you're doing. If you want to take a look at some of these DOS viruses, there's an internet archive collection called the Malware Museum, which has a bunch of DOS viruses that have been cleaned up and can be run easily and safely. But please don't try this at home. And if you still want to, then don't blame me if things go awry. Don't run malware unless you're fine with losing all your data. Anywho, there was a bunch of malware that had unique, beautiful payloads. One of Spanska's own, Marsland, was one of those. It infected COM files in MS-DOS, adding itself to the end of the program's routine. Then, if the clock's minutes are equal to 30, and the seconds are less than or equal to 16, then the payload will activate, giving this screen. A rolling Mars-like landscape, filled with hills and valleys, with the text, Marsland by Spanska. Coding a virus can be creative, not destructive at all, just as Spanska intended. Here's another, Lichen. Once activated, it infects COM and EXE files, and then stays dormant for a month. After a month has passed, it will then wait for there to be no keyboard input for a minute, to which it will then switch the screen to this. 
a simulated light can grow, starting with a few pixels in the center, expanding out to the edge of the monitor, and then the cycle continues to repeat. I think this would be pretty neat as a screensaver if there was ever a need for one back in the day. And how about another? HHNHH, or HH and HH. Apparently standing for hard hit and heavy hate according to internal comments, it too infects com files and only activates on Mondays. When the name ESSIC is typed on the screen, it will then showcase a screen of a ball bouncing across it, and then creating a trail of where it's been. You can then exit out of it and then get back to work, but try not to have ESSIC on your screen for too long because the payload will activate again. I feel like the name should have been Garfield. Because Mondays, am I right? Please laugh. And one last graphically beautiful one, although this one is damaging, LSD. Written by Death Dealer of the group Tempest, it immediately corrupts every file in the root directory before showing a colorful LSD or acid trip-like display of constantly warping and changing colors. But because of the corrupted files, it then makes it so that DOS is unable to boot, which is kind of like an LSD trip in a way. It looks fun for a bit, but when it's over, you realize that everything's kind of f***ed. And there are plenty more viruses with cool visual effects. Walker, Hypnotizer, Birdem, Crash, Cuckoo, and so many more. But I will say that not all viruses are the same. Some were flat out destructive, like Michelangelo, a boot sector infector virus that overwrites several parts of the hard disk, causing DOS to not be able to boot and effectively having all the user's data be lost under normal circumstances. But we're in the future now. Text-based OSs are so 1980s. We have GUI operated stuff now, like Windows. Well, malware continued to evolve and authors still had the humor to have some fun with the stuff that they created. Windows truly changed the computing scene, especially as it evolved past its quote-unquote text-only GUI into one that truly made it unique. And with the internet being more widespread as time progressed, new pieces of malware were easily able to spread. But this does mean that this starts an end to the cool factor of malware. Either way, there are still plenty of pieces of malware that gave some cool visuals. Let's go back to Spanska, as they released a pretty revolutionary bit of malware, and still made it non-destructive. What a good guy. Happy 99 was discovered in, well, 1999, and is considered to be the first modern worm, spreading through both email and Usenet groups. Technically, the first worm is 1971's Creeper, but that was through ARPANET, a predecessor to the World Wide Web. When Happy 99 is run, it will display a window with fireworks, but it would also infect WinSock, a communication library, to look at all the internet traffic on the network. If an email or news group post is sent, it would then attach itself to those posts. But other than that one small infection, the worm doesn't do anything. To quote Spanska again, Happy99 is a sympathetic hitchhiker who uses your internet connection to travel and thanks you for the trip with a small animation. How about let's take a step back and look at Colors, a word macro virus released in 1995. As you can imply, Colors infects word files rather than applications using the macro functionality. Macros are often used to automate tasks or provide something of use to the users who open the document, but they had major flaws being that they could escape Word and directly affect the system. Colors takes advantage of this, adding its own section to Win.ini, counter suit. Each time a Word document is closed, opened, or saved, the counter is incremented, and every 300th increment causes the colors of the OS to change randomly. This might result in some text being unreadable due to it being the same color as the background, and this happens every time the counter goes over a number evenly divisible by 300. But other than that, it doesn't destroy anything. Let's jump ahead again to 2001 with Parrot, the talking virus. Although it's actually a worm, as it spreads via email and IRC, disguising itself as a screensaver. But when run, Parrot will proudly exclaim, Hi there, I'm Parrot, the talking virus, written by Gigabyte. And yes, it mispronounces Gigabyte, but who's counting, huh? It then infects files by turning every program it can into a .prt file, and then replacing the .exe with its own, running the worm and then the original program. This means that every time you open a program, Parrot will be there to announce its presence. Then, after a reboot, it will display the message, You're infected with Parrot, the talking virus, by Gigabyte of Metaphase. Then, a message box with a slightly altered quote from the Italian man who went to Malta will pop up, referencing the senior technology consultant at Sophos, Graham Cluley. The lore behind this is that Cluley called virus authors, quote, spotty teenage nerds, 
which offended the virus maker community so much that they began to make malware that referenced him in a bad light. It then plays an audio clip reading the same thing on the message box, but with an added techno remix behind the latter half. I don't need this. Honestly, pretty funny, but also quite annoying. Just like a real parrot. Now let's talk about Mogold, a Hungarian email worm discovered around 2003. When run, it will email itself out claiming to be a screensaver of Maya Gold, an adult film actress. Of course, this file is the worm. Side note, Screensavers operate the same way as EXEs, just with a different file format. It would also then add itself to the registry, allowing it to be sent via Kazaa, LimeWire, and other peer-to-peer -peer networks. The worm will then begin showing off its payloads. It will firstly attempt to close any antivirus programs, and then it will change some parts of Windows to be a very bright shade of red. Solid hex code FF0000 red. It will then make literal thousands of documents on the desktop, all titled RAVE with an incrementing number behind it. This might sound bad, but all the files are blank. They do take up space, but not a lot. Plus, it can probably be easily remedied. Then, it does my personal favorite payload, printing a document. This document is mostly in Hungarian, but the gist of it is that the printer is calling out for help, venting about how Windows constantly nags it with questions, before ending with Punk's not dead, followed by many smiley emoticons. It will then do a few other payloads, opening the optical disk drive, forcing your mouse cursor to the middle of the screen when approaching the top, and setting your internet browser's homepage to the Offspring's website. It's a very annoying worm, but one that is very unique. How about a simpler one? Desktop puzzle. This is just a Trojan, and it's not even remotely malicious. It just annoys the user. When run, it will tell you to complete a slide puzzle of your computer screen until you can do work again. Short, simple, sweet, and definitely annoying, as any good piece of malware should be. But you can easily end it with Task Manager, so the author f***ed up on that one. Do better next time, nerd. Yet of course, with the internet becoming rapidly widespread during this time, it became apparent to malware authors that it is now super easy to make something dangerous and have it be widespread. This was the era of plenty of VBS email worms, such as the most famous, Love Letter. Another pretty destructive virus is CIH, or Chernobyl which pretty much trashes a computer's BIOS if the motherboard is vulnerable, causing the computer to not post and thus become unusable. Not just some files or the OS itself, the entire computer itself will not boot, no matter what you do. And there is also a bunch of other pieces of malware that have cool payloads. Melting Screen, Nopal, Rigel, Wallpaper, and Magister. Although that last one is pretty complex and malicious. Either way, virus authors began to move on, leaving only malicious programs to run rampant and cause issues for anyone who happens to be unfortunate enough to encounter them. Most of the time nowadays when we hear about malware, it's normally something pertaining to ransomware. Ransomware is a form of malware, most often a worm, as it spreads via some form of networking. But it can also just be a standalone Trojan. Either way, as the name would suggest, it encrypts all the data it can and then holds it for ransom, making you have to pay up in Bitcoin or some other anonymous cryptocurrency on the blockchain, Ethereum, Dogecoin, yada yada, all the buzzwords to get your files back. Supposedly. Plenty of ransomware attacks have happened in recent memory, with such examples as Petya in 2016 and WannaCry in 2017. Both required $300 worth of Bitcoin to be sent to the creators, to which you would totally get your data back. But most of the time after these ransomwares became rampant, the addresses to send your decryption key to would go down, thus rendering your files eternally encrypted. Also, in the case of Petya, your files would actually be corrupted because of bugs in the code. So there's that as well. Just some icing on top of the cake. There's also a threat of cryptocurrency miners being hidden in programs. These cryptojackers, as they're called, use up computer resources to mine crypto and then send it back to a single source, most of the time. These, by definition, are considered trojans and might normally get bundled in with things like pirated software, thus allowing for the mining to be going on in the background with the user being none the wiser, unless they notice some sort of slowdown in their computer's performance. You also might find cryptojackers embedded in websites via JavaScript, and it will use system resources from any user who visits that page. Malware nowadays is hyper-focused on one thing and one thing only, money. If it can make money, then malware authors go for it, spreading their creations far and wide, ruining people's lives little by little, in hopes of just one person sending them that money. And sure, they may need it, but this just isn't it. But there is hope. There is still a subset of people who absolutely want to see that non-evil, cool style of malware revived.
cool graphics, intense payloads, and all for the purpose of just having fun. With the advancements of Windows does indeed come an advancement in malware, and this time it's for the fun of it all. With series light like Danamok 1's viewer made malware being showcased on Enderman's channel, plenty of malware has been made for the sole purpose of being visually appealing or replicating viruses of the olden days. And it would be a crime to not start off with the memes Trojan, made by Lorac in 2016. Memes starts off simple and slow, giving us a notepad document telling us that we're f and our computer won't boot up anymore. Memes will then begin to do an assortment of things, like opening random websites in Windows, moving the mouse cursor, typing random characters, playing error sounds, inverting the screen colors, popping up error windows taunting us, drawing error icons, reversing strings, tunneling your screen, and then pasting random portions of the screen onto itself. All of this causes a chaotic mess, but it still isn't over, as the boot sector of your hard drive is replaced with Nyancat. How lovely. A few others that were shown off on Dan's channel are Zika and Very Fun, written by Int7BH and TDiff respectively. These are two distinct pieces of malware with Zika being a virus and Very Fun being a Trojan. I've paired these two together because they have similar payloads, in that you never know what to expect. Every time you run them, they result in something completely different giving a unique experience to everyone who runs them. These payloads can be anything from playing the Cheetah Men theme, to making all windows and icons run away from the cursor, to drawing rainbow spray can lines across the screen, and even killing system processes and causing the system to blue screen. They can be pretty destructive, but damn is it interesting. And how about one not for viewer made malware, but just for fun? Ransomware. Created by Kang Jun Ho in 2017, this is a standard ransomware, but with a twist. Instead of paying some number of bitcoins to a random crypto wallet address, you have to play Toho Seirensen Undefined Fantastic Object on lunatic mode and get 200 million points. The best part is that it doesn't come with the game and you have to find it on your own. And it is true to its word. If you get to 200 million points, it starts to decrypt your files. Now Ho actually accidentally infected himself with his own ransomware and decided to make a neutralizer program for it, which injects a user-defined score into the game so that you can become uninfected and your files will still be intact. And that's how you can tell he's definitely not a bad apple. He's, he's not a... Not, not a bad apple. You know, like the music video. Let's move over to Enderman's channel, where he showed off Sulfoxide, written by Weepet. Or Wipet. I don't know. Again, it's destructive, but by god is it beautiful while it destroys things. When ran, Sulfoxide immediately blue screens the computer, or so you think. The letters start to glitch out, and glitchy noises begin to play. Then it just progresses and doesn't stop, becoming more and more chaotic with the glitchy graphics and sounds. While this happens, Sulfoxide enumerates all drives and corrupts every file it can find. After it's done royally screwing up your computer, it then overwrites the master boot record, proudly displaying its name on your screen. Also on Enderman's channel is Solaris, written by Nikipat. In a similar vein to Sulfoxide, Solaris contains various glitchy graphics, but not before overwriting the first 2 megabytes of your drive. It then absolutely glitches out the screen, all while ruining your ears with harsh noises, but your computer is still usable. After it decides it's done, it blue screens your computer and then displays some very demo scene-esque visuals, with some comments from Nikipad and a countdown timer. And what does it count down to? Well, a full hunt first person game. And there's even a QR code that redirects to a puzzle of sorts, which is insane, especially when you consider that everything after the blue screen was coded in only 50 kilobytes. Many games come with viruses, but not every virus comes with a game, if you know what I mean. And while it's cool to look at these pieces of malware and think about how we're getting back to what malware originally was in the DOS era, it's still not what viruses truly are now. And it's more contained to a niche subset of nerds and geeks. These don't make headlines, but Petya and WannaCry do, and that's for a good reason. I mean, they're all still malware and can f*** you over, but hey, I guess it's for the better that the nerds are keeping these things to themselves. Malware ain't what it used to be. It's almost like that's the title of this video or something. Yet, in a way, we've come full circle. From nerdy kids making stuff for the hell of it to right back in the same place. At least this time, it's limited to a bunch of geeks who just want to have fun and with more modern computers. But the only important malware that ever gets attention now f***s up your files and demands payment or just takes up precious computer resources while you're trying to your damned hardest to play a pirated version of 
I don't know, Call of Duty? In a way, we're so bad. But for a moral, malware is malware. Don't f with it. I miss my files. <laughs> <laughs>